This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in our next lesson in our look at 4K workflows inside of Avid Media Composer, we're going to take a look at version 8.3 specifically in this tutorial. I want to show you how it's going to differ from your HD workflow, doing your offline in HD and then reconforming in, you know, higher than HD in our case 4K. And I also want to show you how an extra little tool, especially if you're working with red footage, is really going to help you out, especially if you have someone working with you who's going to be doing a lot of the coloring of your images behind the scenes. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. And before we get started, I do want to remind you that I am working in version 8.3 of Media Composer. I'm just going to come on over here to the Format tab, and you can see that I'm working in a 4K DCI flat project. What we're going to do is we're going to do our offline at low bandwidth 4K, and then we're going to finish everything up in high quality. Now, the process is similar to the HD offline for a 4K online, but there's a few bells and whistles that you need to know, and there's a very cool external step that I'm going to show you as well to really enhance the footage that you're working with in your projects. Okay, now of course the first thing that we always need to do our edit is we need some footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to navigate up to file, I'm going to come to AMA link, I'm just going to select all of my clips here inside of my red footage folder, I'm just simply going to say open. Media Composer is going to create me a bin for that footage. And of course this footage is courtesy of Artbeats, fantastic looking 4K footage always. Remember, you can check them out at artbeats.com. Very cool. Now, what's important to keep in mind here is that I am, I'm not in the best quality, but I am in 4K. And if I hit play here, you're going to see that this footage not playing back in real time. But of course, what's important to remember is that I can always change the proxy timeline that I'm working in to get the most optimal playback for the system setup that I happen to have. So all I need to do to do that is to simply navigate over to the Format tab. You'll see right here the proxy timeline. I can switch it between quarter quality or 1 16th quality. You'll see now I can come back and I should pretty much get a real-time playback now of this footage. And of course what's important to keep in mind is that this conversion is happening to 16th quality in real time. Very, very nice. Now something else that I do want to point out, especially because I'm working with red footage, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to right click on my clip. I'm going to navigate down to source settings. Now what's important to keep in mind is that you're only going to have access to what I'm about to show you before you transcode your clip. So keep that in mind in the back of your head. If you're working with red footage, you right click on it, you head down to source settings, and you bring up the source settings window in the AMA tab here on the left hand side you're now going to see that I can actually get in and with this red footage I can make all kinds of adjustments to this footage right here from within Media Composer and not have to go to a program like Red Cine X. Now I am going to go to Red Cine X in a little bit to show you some cool stuff but I do want to point this out. So if your entire workflow happened to be, you know, AMA linked to, or if you wanted to AMA link to your clips and get in and make some adjustments right here from within Media Composer, you can do that. Now, of course, what you can also do is get in and make frame flex adjustments. If you happen to be working in a different, you know, let's say you're working in a 2K project as opposed to a 4K project, you can get in and make frame flex changes. What you can also do inside of the playback rates is you can get in and you can actually change the playback rate of the clip. In this case, this clip is 24 frames per second, but if it was 25, you could actually change the clip's frame rate right here to be 24 to match the project or to leave it as whatever the clip happens to be right now. Of course, you can also get in and do color encoding options from here as well. But again, I can't stress this enough. When you do your transcode, so when your clips are no longer AMA linked to and they're actual media inside a Media Composer, when you do that transcode, you are going to lose the ability to get in and make these changes here inside of the source settings window. What you might have access to, assuming that you leave it unchecked, is the color encoding options and the frame flex options. 
So keep that in mind. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cancel out of that because I don't wanna make any changes to my clip right here. And what I'm gonna do just for argument's sake here is just I'm gonna turn off the proxy timeline just to put this back at the best possible quality to do our transcode. Now, let's talk a little bit about transcoding of our 4K clips. What I'm gonna do, why don't we just use the same clip here, is I'm just gonna right click on that clip. I'm gonna navigate up to consolidate transcode. Now, as a default, as always, it's going to be on consolidate. We wanna switch that to be transcode. Now, a couple little things that you do need to keep in mind. If you happen to still be working in proxy mode, which I'm not, why don't I actually just do that? I'm just gonna switch back to, let's just put this back to 16th quality where I was before, if I right click on my clip, I navigate down to, of course, again, or navigate up actually to consolidate transcode, come back to transcode, you're gonna notice, well, hopefully you're gonna notice that in 16th quality up here in the project window, the transcode window's automatically going to default to that. So that's something that's exceptionally important to keep in mind. You might not want to transcode in 16th quality. You might just want to transcode at low bandwidth, but you might want to keep your project settings as the source dimensions. So this is where a lot of people get tripped up in the process. That's why for me, once I'm done watching stuff with the proxy timeline, I'm constantly turning it back to be full quality. So this way there's never any confusion. When I right click, I come up to consolidate transcode, I come to transcode, that raster dimension is always going to be on off or the project dimensions. Now, of course, next, target video resolution. In this case, because we're doing an offline, I wanna leave that as low bandwidth. You'll see the next option, new to version 8.3, convert to project frame rate. Before, that was always turned on. Now I have the option. Because I'm gonna be relinking to this footage, I wanna make sure that box is not checked because I wanna make sure that all the frame rates stay whatever they currently happen to be. Okay, you'll remember I also mentioned when we were in the source settings window that if we wanted to, we could apply source transformations like color encoding or frame flex, but in most cases, you're gonna to wanna to leave those unchecked in case you wanna get in and make any changes after the fact. Okay, so all I'd have to do now is simply select the drive I wanna to transcode to, of course, I could run this in the background if I wanted to. I'd simply click transcode, and in a few minutes, or depending on how much footage you have, it could be a few hours, you'll be all set to start your offline. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna delete all this footage because I've already transcoded some clips, okay? I'm just gonna come back to bins. You'll see I have a bin called transcodes 24 frames per second. You'll see that I got some clips in here. I've even put some in and out points. There we go, very nice. And let's just make a very quick offline here. Now, what's also important to keep in mind, you'll see that I have three clips that are 25 frames per second, two that are 24 frames per second. And what's gonna happen here, and let's just make sure I pick a 24 frame per second clip first, is when I drop that clip into my timeline, everything's gonna look normal. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that as soon as you see that green dot on your footage, it means that something is going on under the hood of the clip that you might want to adjust. You'll see that if I step into effects mode, it's telling me right now that I have frame flex applied to this clip and I can get in and make some framing adjustments if I want to. Okay, so let's just drop a few more clips in here. Just come down to the end, drop that in. As soon as we see the different color, we need to remember, ah, this clip must be a different frame rate. And I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna alter the clips here. Now, is that the one I started with? No, it wasn't here. Okay, drop that in. Okay, sure, drop that in. And which is the last one? I think it's those flowers, or maybe it was that one there. Nope, it's definitely this one here. Okay. So here is my fantastic offline, okay? Now, of course, if I come back, I hit play. What's important to keep in mind is that because I've transcoded this footage into low bandwidth, DNXR, DNXHR, it'll play back in real time. Very cool, okay? You'll see the AMA link to didn't play back, but the transcode plays back perfectly, okay? Now, I'm done, hypothetically, and what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to relink back to this footage, but you'll remember I mentioned earlier that I did actually have another tool at my disposal where I could get in and do a lot of color alterations before I relink back to this footage, so I don't need to worry about doing a color correction, or I might wanna do a color grade, but a lot of the color correction can be done by somebody else while I'm working with this transcoded footage. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. Now, the clip that I'm gonna make the adjustments to is going to be this one right here because we've got a lot going on with this shot. You can see the sky is very green. I'm not too happy with that. And I wanna make a few other very, like I said, minor adjustments. Now, again, I could have made these changes inside of Media Composer, but why? 
when I can have you know someone else working in tandem with me, I can be doing all of the editorial. They can be doing all the color correction with you know possibly either myself or someone else stepping in inside a media composer to do a color grade at the very end. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, like I said, I want to use this clip as the example. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hide out a media composer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to command tab into Red Cine X Pro. Now, of course, before I move on, I do want to mention that Red Cine X Pro is 100% free. Okay, so let's get in there. What I want to do is I want to show Red Cine X Pro where all my red footage is, courtesy of, of course, of Art Beats. And let's find that shot that I want to make the adjustment to. Now I'm just going to double click on it. You're going to see, I'll just zoom back here. There we go. If I command tab back to media composer, you'll see the shots are pretty darn the same. And like I said, I want to get in and I want to make some adjustments to this to make it look a little bit more realistic looking because I don't find it to be too realistic, a little bit too green in the sky, a little bit too green in the city. So let's make that adjustment. Now, one thing that I do love about Red Cine X, and it's actually something that's very useful for anybody that's starting out doing things like color correction. When I talk about color correction, I talk about things like highlights, midtones, and shadows. I normally describe it like this. If you take a look at the scope up here at the top, you know, we have 100% uh, down to 0%. If you sort of look 0% to about 30 to 35%, that's going to encompass your shadows. Sort of that 35% to 70% is going to be about your midtones, and then 70% to 100% is going to be your highlights. And what's cool about Red Sin X, you'll see that we have this little orange dot here. And as I drag through the image, that orange dot is jumping all over the place. But what it's doing is it's showing me that, okay, Kev, this area of your shot would represent it be, or be represented by a shadow. You'll see that the orange dot is falling into the sort of that 30% range, which sort of, as I described before, for me, I would consider to be a shadow. Now, normally where I like to start with Red Cine X is, of course, with a white balance. Why not? Don't we, you know, don't we always wish that in every color grading or color correction you know, application we had a simple button for white balance? We can do that simply by selecting the white balance, picking what we think should be white, just like that, and clicking on it. And you'll see that we've already made a good adjustment to make you know, a very different, more realistic looking shot. Sort of very green. And now everything's very blue with that red there too, which is very cool. Now, of course, this is sort of the mid-tones here. And we're going to sort of go into the highlight range with the blue up here. So let's just navigate down here. And let's take our curves. Let's come over to blue and let's just take the highlights. And let's just add some blue in here. Very nice. Now what's important to keep in mind about these buildings. Again, these buildings are looking maybe a little bit red. So in the shadows, I'm just going to bring that out just a little bit. Not too much. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to come all the way down to my color wheels. And I'm going to come to the lift color wheel. Let's just drop that down a little bit just to give us a little bit more darkness there. Bring the mids up just a little bit. It's more so the highlights that I want to bring up. Not too much. And I think this gives us a little bit more of a realistic looking cityscape. There we go. Maybe we'll just give the blues and the highlights a little bit more. There we go. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, what do you need to do now? You need to take this clip, you need to export it, you need to do something with it. I don't actually have to do anything with it. Now this is where I was talking about working in tandem with somebody else. So I could conceivably be sitting in Media Composer working away. I've already transcoded that clip, so really this red footage is just sitting on this drive not doing anything. So what I could do is have somebody else in another room sit down with this red footage and go through and color correct it all so that it's what I would consider to be quote unquote correct. You know, maybe we're going to do a grade later, but I want to get everything looking proper. And this is how we could go about doing it very quickly and very simple. And like I said, having two people tackling this as opposed to me doing the editorial and then me going back and redoing all this, you know, definitely a big help. What's also important to keep in mind is that in Red Cine X, we have, a, we have access to a lot more parameters than we do inside that AMA tab inside of the source settings of Media Composer. So keep that in mind. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quit out of Red Cine X. I'm actually going to not discard. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard my my uh, my project that I'm working on because what's important to keep in mind is that just because I've said to discard the project that I was working on, it hasn't changed the fact that as soon as I make those changes inside of Red Cine X, they're immediately applied to that clip. Now, how do I know that? Well, if I go back into Red Cine X, let's just do that here. 
and I come back to the exact same clip that we were just using. Let's just give Red Cine X a second to open here. Come back to red footage. Let's come back to our cityscape here. You'll see if I come down here, take a look at our blue curves. There's the adjustments that I made. You'll see that if I come down to my color wheels, there's the adjustments that I made to the lift gamma and gain. So it remembers everything that I had just done. Now what I'm going to do here, just for the purposes of us seeing the difference, is I'm actually going to make a video mix down of this layer here. So let's just come to video mix down. And what we're going to do is we'll just do it as low bandwidth. That's perfectly fine. We're just going to, you'll see it's pretty quick because remember this is transcoded footage. And once it's done here, what we're going to do is we're just going to drop it onto V2. And then we're going to forget about it for about two minutes. Okay. Once it's done, there we go. Let's just take it again. We're just going to drop it onto V2. Just create a new video layer, Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y on Windows. Let's drop that in there. Very nice. Okay. Now I want to get in and I want to relink to the original footage for these clips that are in my timeline. No problem. All I'm going to do is simply select the media here. Let's delete it. The actual media itself. See you later. Everything's going to go offline. Of course, my video mix down is still going to be there. Now you remember I made the adjustments to this clip here. So why don't I just leave my uh, time bar right on that clip? All I'm going to do now is with these clips selected, I'm simply going to navigate up to clip. We're going to come down to, let's make sure I have the bin selected here. There we go. Come up to clip, come down to relink, just like such. What we want to do is we want to relink to media on all drives, on all the available drives. What we want to make sure that we relink re by is the time code, the start, and the source name to be the tape name or the source file name. What we also want to make sure of, and you'll remember that I set this inside of the previous tutorial, is that we want to make sure that we're relinking to any video format, not any HD video format, and we don't want to make sure that we're matching to the video format of the current project because that red footage isn't the uh, video format of this current size. It's not 4K DCI. It's actually a little bit bigger than that. So what I want to do is make sure I select any video format. All I'm going to do now is simply say OK. We're going to give Media Composer a second here and boom, everything has been re-AMA linked to. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, how do you know that you've re-AMA linked to the original footage? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm going to do is if I match frame this clip here in my timeline and I say, show me the bin that this clip comes to. Well, if, it might actually help if I selected the right layer here. There we go. Let's match frame. Let's say find bin. You'll see now that this clip has been re-linked to the original because you can see the little link there by AMA to the original 4K red code raw clip. But you're going to notice that I have a bit of a problem because if I switch between my mix down and my clip that I know that I altered in Red Cine X, they're exactly the same. So what exactly is going on here? Ah, well the big problem is, is that I haven't told Media Composer to update the timeline and take a look at the new information in this red raw clip. So how do I do that? Well, it's actually very simple. All I'm going to do is head right back on over here to the bin. I'm going to right click on the sequence itself. I'm going to navigate down to refresh sequence. I'm going to say AMA plugin settings. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see now that the clip in my timeline has immediately been updated with that new look that I created. Less green in the sky, more of that blue and red that I really like. Let's just put this to be full quality here. Now take a look at the difference between the before, very green, and the after, much more sort of a bluish reddish purple that I was going for. Now, of course, like I said, that was, you know, really sort of a five second color correction. But you see that with the power of Red Sin X to get in and really do some really cool, really precise color correction and the power of Media Composer, you can have editorial and color correction going at the same time. Once your sequence is done in 4K and you're going to relink, as soon as you relink to it, you can then tell Media Composer to update with all of those new red adjustments that you've made, and you can have essentially a color corrected show ready to go with a couple clicks of the mouse. Okay, now I know that I said that this was only going to be a two-part lesson, but I've decided to add a third part in after I got an email from a viewer reminding me of something very important that I do need to talk about but I'm going to save that tease for the next lesson. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson 
or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.